a little while ago we did a video on uh, unboxing the PowerX MH-C9000 Wizard 1 Maha whatever thing that I got here charger um, so I'm doing a little follow-up video now that I've had this and the uh, Eneloop batteries for a little while now and I'd have to say this is one of the best chargers I think you could buy um, absolutely it's the best charger for the money I mean $50 how can you go wrong on something like this? So I thought I'd walk you through just a, a real quick kind of demo of what this charger does, some of its features, and how to use it, and a few of the little things that I found um, irritating or that could be improved. Um, so we'll plug it in, power plugs at the back, plug it in, it lights up, and as you'll notice, it goes through a little self-test and then powers back off and then it won't power back on until you insert a battery but before that I thought I would give you a little overview on batteries specifically um, you need to know what rates to charge and discharge the batteries at if you're going to use a charger like this and to do that is pretty simple in all reality all you need to do is know what capacity your batteries are and then it's just some basic math so like for example now, hard to see here because of my lighting situation. This is a very cheap battery. You can feel it's cheap. It feels very light, and it says 600 milliamp on it. Whereas the Eneloops say right on the back, 1900 milliamp hours. Every battery should have a rating somewhere on it that says how many milliamp hours its rated capacity is. Now, sometimes you'll run into some like these two here. The lower one, as you can see, the BTY, gray one down here is 2500, this one up here is 1400. Neither of these batteries are anywhere near their rated capacity. The BTY one here is maybe holds 600 milliamp hours, but that's the manufacturer's fault, obviously, for improperly labeling it. So, give you a little demo here on how to use it, and I'd like to say these Eneloop batteries are fantastic. I use them for a lot of high draw devices like my Wii remotes and some things like that that do tend to use quite a bit of um, energy when you're using them. Uh, also uh, digital cameras, anything like that that take AA batteries. These are a great battery to use um, partly because they do hold the charge fairly well while you're using it so that they don't go dead you know, as soon as you put them in like some batteries tend to. But also you can charge these batteries up and then keep them in a drawer um, for months and months and months and months um, and they don't go dead. You pull them out and they're still fully charged which with any other batteries that you might find um, for example these Energizer rechargeable ones or just you know any basically any brand of standard rechargeable battery it's you know, Duracell, any of them. Anything that's not a low self-discharge or ready to use, pre-charge, those are all similar terms that basically mean the same thing. So these batteries are very nice and for an 8-pack, you know, they're not really that expensive. So go ahead and pick some up next time you're ordering something. But here's a little overview of what happens. So plug this in and charger powers up it defaults to charge mode and if you just leave anything everything alone it will start charging but navigate the menus using these up and down buttons and these can be used too if you leave it on any one setting for like I think it's about 15 seconds or so it will just start with its default settings on that so refresh analyze is one of the ones where you need that knowledge of what capacity the battery is you should charge it. See, set charge rate it's shown right now, it's flashing. Set that to half the battery's capacity. So since this is 1900 milliamps, we're going to want 900 or 1000 milliamps. Um, I've charged mine at 1000. Basically, the faster you charge the battery, the worse it is for the battery. Now, you set your discharge rate at a quarter of the rated capacity. So around 500 milliamp hours is good or 500 milliamps so 
See, now it started charging because I left it alone there for too long. So pull it back out, pop it back in. But basically, if you just worked through that, then it would start charging anyways. So, the break-in mode down here lets you set the battery's capacity. So you'd set it to 1900, hit go, and it'll charge it until it's fully charged, then discharge it, and basically repeat that cycle for a few times so that you get the maximum capacity out of the battery. Um, it's a good idea to do the refresh analyze every maybe 100 charges or so, 50 to 100 charges on your battery. Um, the break-in, do it when you first get the battery, and then every so often. Um, it doesn't need to be every 50 charges or every 100 charges. Just if the battery starts showing that it's losing capacity or, you know, anything like that when you do a refresh analyze if the capacity is lower than when you bought it then do a break in and it'll usually pep the battery right back up um, the other two options here discharge and cycle effectively um, discharging is obviously going to discharge the battery all the way cycle is going to discharge then recharge discharge recharge for a set amount of times you can set that up how many times you want to do it. So you set the charge rate, set the discharge rate, and set the number of cycles. And you can, you know, crank it right up. Well, let's see, what's the max? 12. So 12 charge discharge cycles, which if a battery won't come back after that, then it's pretty much shot, which is what's happened to a lot of my um, Energizer 2300 milliamps that I had. These were good batteries and they worked very well, but um, charging them with a rapid charger such as you know the cheapies that you see at Walmart for 20 bucks ended up killing several packs of these batteries that I had so this charger here um, works very well I'm very happy with it and if you put multiple batteries in and get them charging you can't just pop two in because then it it won't let you set the second one. You have to set this one. You can't set your um, set it. You know, can't switch which slot you want to select. If you wanted to change something, you have to pull the battery back out and then put it back in, and then you know, fiddle around with it a bit. Sometimes the menus can be kind of complicated, but. Um, all in all, it's a good charger. The one complaint that I have that really does irritate me is how bright this LCD is. I'm sure you can see it, and it's just like, it's blindingly bright. Um, if you turn off all the lights in the room, it lights up like a night light. You, it keeps the whole room bright, so you can't have it in the same room as you. Um, I'm looking into options on uh, putting a switch or a dimmer on that. Um, it appears that the power for the backlight on the LCD is separate from the logic power for the LCD. So it should be as simple as just putting in a variable resistor or a switch to toggle the backlight on and off. But, so there's some of my thoughts. Um, if you have any experiences with this charger, feel free to share them with myself and the viewers. Um, as always, if you would like any more detailed information, please let me know. Um, post a comment here, post on the forums, and I'd be happy to help you out as much as I can. Thanks for watching.